Hello, community. Hey, community. I am here. Hopefully you're there. Even if you're not, we would have a great time talking about writing. Hello, welcome to Get Right. I'm just sharing it on my page. Super excited today. Um, I was thinking about using metaphor and crystallized experiences to write narrative and I was like, geez, that feels like a very Lisa thing. Um, so it's kind of panicking, like, ah, oh, what am I gonna do for my Get Right class? Like, what works for me and also works for other people? Um, so I went back in my brain to college, like way back to the first or second year in college. And I was like, oh, I remember a professor making us write from this book. Um, and I will put it in the comments if anyone's interested. What if writing exercises for fiction writers? And lo and behold, one of the activities I opened to was the exact same thing I was trying to plan on my own anyways. So which reminded me, your instincts are good right? So follow your instincts, but also don't invent the wheel. I don't have to come up with every single writing piece that we do from my brain. I can use good practices that are just good practices. Um, side note, that's true in recovery too. Um, yeah. Anyways, hopefully you're having a great weekend. Um, to me, it feels like a rainy day, like oh, it's perfect for a book. And whenever I think of books, I also think of writing. Um, so I hope that's on for you too. But we are going to start today. I'm just going to have you brainstorm some memories or moments. Um, so if you were here, if you were logged on when I first started, I had said my first intention for today was to talk to you about crystallizing moments. Um, and what this means for me is it's something super specific that happened in my life and then I use it as a lens to describe other things. So like this morning, um, the crystallizing moment I was thinking about was I went on a backpacking trip in the Adirondacks and on the third day, the last day, the last mountain, the top of the 13th peak, I'm exhausted, overwhelmed by the beauty, excited for the trip to be over, sad that the trip was going to be over. Um, I got to the top of Mount Marcy and like the wind was blowing and the sun was shining. And right there, zooming in on that very moment, I had a thought, three words, I am enough. And if I zoom out from that, I can tell a big story about change and acceptance and self-love and blah, 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 blah. Or I could just talk about exhaustion, and <laughs> your mind hallucinating when you're extra tired from walking for three days. But um, I get to choose that, which is the power you have. Um, you get to choose your story. And today we're going to work on taking real stories and making them creative through that crystallization process. Long story short, what I need you to do now is dig in your memory. And what I want you to think about is anything that was emotionally charged or significant. So I would say my example I just gave you was both significant and emotionally charged. Um, the other day I burnt all of the bacon that I had and you know, we can't go out and shop. I have an immune compromised son. So that was devastating. Is it significant? Nope, but it was pretty emotionally charged. I threw, one heck of a temper tantrum over that bacon. <laughs> so um, I'm just using those two to kind of give you an array. Literally anything that when you think of it, emotions are attached, that belongs on your list. And it might never leave the list, right? So when we talk about brainstorming, it's just getting all the ideas out, good and bad and in between. And then we'll learn how to sift through them to create a writing experience. So Long story short from long-winded Lisa, get your pen or pencil ready. Um, I'm gonna set a timer and I'm gonna have you list significant and or emotionally charged moments and memories. 
I don't see any questions, so I'm gonna start my timer. I feel like three minutes is a good time for this, okay? It's gonna feel long, but that's gonna give you time to sit and really dig, dig, dig in your brain. So, three, two, one, list. If you're just joining us, I put the comments or the directions in the comments. You're just brainstorming and listing significant and emotionally charged moments and memories. We're one minute in, that means two minutes left. If you're feeling stuck, close your eyes, dig in, and figure out what else is in there. If you can't start with memories, maybe start with the emotion. Um, ah, ironically, I have my handy dandy emotional wheel. Maybe I'll shoot some of these out there. Um, if you can't think of a memory, think of anger. Write down some moments that have created anger for you. Ooh, here's a good one. Powerless. Write down some memories or moments where you've been powerless. Powerful. Ooh, makes me think of one. The smile, that means it's emotionally charged. I like that memory. Um, playful. Peaceful. All right, finish jotting down your memories. That's three minutes and go ahead and set it aside. I harp on this, but I'll never say it enough. Good writing comes from simmering. Not much of a cook, but I hear that that is the key to flavor, um, is to be able to simmer and let it sit. Same with writing. You have to take what your expectations are and set them aside. One of the ways that we do that is by me distracting you with lots more talking. Um, but today, instead of my words, you're going to hear the words from Joy Nolan. Kind of going into the activity we're going to be working on and why it works. Um, she starts this activity called Changing Your Life with a quote from saying, Art is art because it is not nature. Ooh, I like that. Art is art because it is not nature. Sometimes we got to detract from reality. All right. Good fiction has a confluence of detail that real life seldom has. We've all been told, write what you know, and it's true that autobiographical material enriches fiction with vivid details. But don't sell your fiction short by sticking to the facts. What you know extends far past the specific incidents of your life. The more flexible and elastic your use of facts and feelings borrowed from life, the stronger your writing will be. 
Marcel Proust said, creative wrong memory is a source of art. As a writer of fiction, you have to be more loyal to the fiction than to the facts that inspired it. Remembering being chased by a vicious dog as a child may give you just the right flavor of terror to vividly describe a thief's fear while fleeing the police in your story. Or you can invest a fictional event with remembered emotion or use a real life scene as a backdrop for your imagination, changing the feelings and consequences entirely. Um, so that's something we're gonna work on today with our activity. And I just love where he said, she says, this is from Joy Nolan, you have to be more loyal to the fiction than to the facts. Um, ironically, when I was in college, not the year that I, I got this book, but um, also an experience in college, I had a professor tell me that when I stick to the truth in my poetry, I'm doing a disservice to my reader. Because as soon as I share a poem, it is no longer about my experience, it is about theirs. And if cutting some of the truth out of it makes it a better experience, then that's my job as a writer. Um, today, even if you're not into writing fiction, right, like you're really appealed with memoir or journaling to get your emotions out, changing a scene can change the way that you attach emotionally to it. So regardless of whether you're here to write creative stories, here to get emotions out, or just here because it's quarantine life and you don't know what else to do on your Sunday at two, um, we're just gonna play around with creative wrong memory, and kind of morphing with things. But we can't morph something until we have it. Um, so the next thing I want you to do is choose one of your memories, but if you've been here in the past, you know I talk about that separation from left right brain and how we want to cross that barrier. One way you can do that is by circling things with your wrong hand. So I write with my right hand. I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to circle the memories that appeal to me with my left hand. If you're like I'm not doing that, my circle will look like a squiggle. Maybe pick up a different color. Okay, your call. But what I'd like you to do now and I will put this in the comments, go ahead and look at your list and choose one of the memories to work with today. All right. Um, I did put the first directions in the comments so people just joining us get both. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to journal about the memory. We're going to have some focused writing time, but we're going to do it in third person. Yeah. So that means instead of I statements, we're now going to become the character or, you know, whoever the memory is about, they're the character. So you could say in my, my case, I'll, let me use a specific example rather than just telling you, um, or is Okay, the memory I want to do is racing my dirt bike at Broom Tioga for the first time as a single female. Um, so I'm going to say Lisa finished putting on her riding gear and looked out across the track one last time before her moto was about to begin. She took a deep breath. All of the things that she thought were fear down in the depth of her gut were really just experience waiting to happen or something like that. Um, so it just feels more dramatic when you're writing about it as if it's a character. So that's what I want you to do. For the memory or specific event that you chose, I want you to journal about it in the third person. So you're telling the story of yourself from this like omnipresent per like, like narrator telling the story. Um, so it's really important that you don't use words like I. Again, this isn't your actual writing piece. This is still part of the brainstorming process. So don't check yourself on validity, creativity, quality. You're literally just getting ideas out there because we're gonna do more, more writing in another weird, strange twist. Mm, so journaling, I feel like five, what is that, eight? Yeah, we can do five minutes. All right, so five minutes of journaling about one specific emotionally charged significant moment in your life, but doing it from the third person in three, two, one, go.
about three more minutes. If you're feeling stuck, this is a journal. So just write the words, I'm stuck. I have no idea what to write. I have no idea what to write. I have no idea what to write until eventually you have an idea. So it's about that sustained movement more than what's actually coming out of the pen or the keyboard or whatever you're using today. Procrastinator tip, if you have water, or tea, or coffee, you can drink that instead of being productive. You're not welcome. It's horrible advice. little less than a minute left so keep going just anything that you can think of from that that moment where it happened who was there the sounds the smells the setting especially those emotions how how did they show up in the body you know was the body language open was it closed were the eyes in the distance were they staring were they looking down were they closed all super important details. All right, go ahead and finish up the last phrase or sentence you're working on. And again, I'm going to ask you to do that annoying thing. Don't look at your writing. Don't read it. Don't overanalyze it. But just pause and listen. Um, so like I said, I did go with that, that dirt bike memory. Um, a little context. I grew up riding dirt bikes, and my family, well, we all do it. It's like you pop out of the womb. What kind of bike do you want? Are you a four-stroke or a two-stroke kind of person? Yamaha, Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna for a little while. Anyways, that's not part of the story. Um, part of the story is when I was, I believe, 20, probably, tw let's see, how old is I when I died? Probably 23 years old, 24, I don't know. I was racing at Broom Tioga trying to make it to Loretta Lynn's, which is like part of the qualifying process to be professional. And uh, I was there by myself. And my dad showed up to help me. And I just remembered like how different it was not being with a team or a group, being on my own and how liberating and scary it was. I remember standing up at the top of the hill and looking down and seeing the whole track, but also where I used to watch the pros race on this track when I was a child. Um, so it brought in all of these, these feelings and memories. But the cool part, when we speak to this exercise we're doing, 
when we talk about visceral feelings, right? When I was looking there, my heart was racing. My stomach was kind of like, like tightened up. There was this metallic dry feeling in the back of my throat. That is anxiety and fear, but it is also the same exact response that excitement and adrenaline produces. So I get to decide, was the Lisa in that story terrified because of the, the immense pressure she was putting on herself to perform? Or was she like, yeah, I got this. I am so full of adrenaline and excitement that I can literally feel it clenching my stomach and making my heart race. I just wanna go back to what, what this activity said. As a writer of fiction, you have to be more loyal to the fiction than to the facts that inspired it, right? So I need to decide which one of those is more interesting for my readers and go with that. The truth doesn't matter. It was the diving board that got me here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is post some options. What I do want you to do is look over what you wrote, kind of just skim it, don't read it, because we are gonna have some time to like really dig into it, but just, just read it while I type up these options. So we're gonna play around with it. Okay. So hopefully you have some journaling about a specific memory. It's done in third person. Now we're gonna switch it up even more. Um, I want you to ask yourself, what if this story had taken place when I was 10 to 20 years older? What if I was 10 to 20 years younger? What if it happened in a different country? What if it occurred on a different planet or in a different time period? What if we switch the gender roles? You know, for my example, what if the main character was a Lee instead of a Lisa? How would the experience look from his eyes? What if you told the told the story from the perspective of an inanimate object? But instead of hearing Lisa's story, we hear the dirt bike. Or maybe the track is telling the story of all of the tires going over it and pounding it and how fulfilling it is, but very tiring. What if I use those same exact emotions and put an entirely different experience on top of it? Um, so that would take some creative liberty and thinking. Like, what else did I always want to be? Oh, I always wanted to be a writer when I grew up. What if I took, like, that extreme level of heightened excitement before an adrenaline-packed thing, like a a national qualification for a motocross race. But instead of talking about dirt bikes, I talk about picking up my pen. Like that would be super intense. It might be kind of fun. Um, anyways, I'm getting off in the dingweeds. Typical. So I put in the comments a list and that's what I want you to do next. Um, we're gonna do a 10 minute writing activity. So this is what I would call your actual writing piece. Um, this is where you might want to slow down a little bit and instead of just journaling, work on writing. But at the same time, for a lot of us, the process of actual writing looks the same as journaling. You just go, go, go. But now it's no longer your story. It's no longer fully the truth. Um, if it helps you to change the narrator's name to, to make that happen, go ahead and do so. But I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes and you're going to choose to tell that same story from a different lens using one of the things I listed over there. And at about five minutes in, I am gonna pause you and ask you some prompting questions to help dig some more. Again, if you don't care, or if you're on a roll without me, please just mute me and do what feels right. Any questions? No? Okay, we have just enough time to do 10 minutes, so. Remember, I am going to stop you at about five minutes in. So go ahead and get started with your 10 minutes of writing. I'm going to put the whole prompt beginning to end um, in the comments while you do so.
All right, if you're doing good, we still have five minutes. You can turn the volume down. Um, if you're feeling stuck, I do have an activity that I like to use. It's called what if. Um, so I read the last sentence that I wrote and I say, what if, and then I pick a random scenario. So for example, um, the last sentence I wrote is it's Blankness stared back at her. From there, she could see the words of all the authors she admired, all those who had gone before her, dancing across the now empty page. So I would say, what if the words came by themselves? And then when I was done with that, I would just pose myself another question. Um, so you say, like, all of a sudden the words came flying out. What if the words actually flew? Well, now my brain would be thinking of the words flying off the page. So you kind of take the last sentence that you wrote and you turn it into a super imaginary what if. Um, and sometimes the result makes you go, ugh, like, I don't want words actually flying off a page. That's not the story I'm telling. But not knowing what you don't want also helps you understand what you do want. Um, so try that what if. Do it five times before you give up on yourself. Um, that being said, we're six and a half minutes in, pretty bad at math, but I think that's three and a half minutes left. I'll give you another tip in about a minute and a half for those of you who are also feeling stuck.
we got some new people joining us um, if you're unclear on what to do please let me know and I'll repost it in the comments um, it's pretty specific short directions um, those of you who are already writing we do have two more minutes and if you're feeling stuck another option is to go back through and we talked about this a couple weeks ago if you were here look for the senses like maybe you don't have anything else to write about the moment go back if you don't hear sounds, put some description of what can be heard there. What, maybe if there's any smells in the air. For my example, it's dirt bike, so you could absolutely smell that high octane fuel. Um, maybe it's a taste, like uh, metallic fear. Um, it could be a touch, like a physical texture. And it could also be like a feeling or a sight. So if you're feeling stuck, in the last minute, go through and try to infuse all of that sensory imagery, all of the senses that you get to use in your everyday life. All right, go ahead and finish up what you're working on. And before we end today, I'll just share a little bit of, of mine. I'd started with um, a specific memory that was emotionally charged of racing my dirt bike on a track I used to watch the pros race on when I was a kid. And I ended with this sentence. Um, Suddenly, wait, well, I'll do the last two. Um, I could feel the vibration of the motorcycles pounding the earth, smell the high octane, and dream of being there. Now it was her turn. Suddenly, fear climbed her throat and left a metallic aftertaste on her tongue. Um, so what I did was I took those same emotions and moments, but instead created this entirely fictional experience of a writer sitting down in her chair. Um, and being overwhelmed by all of the sensory image, like things coming from the outside, like her son playing video games and the noises of her house. And it is an old farmhouse, which mine isn't, but it just seemed more appropriate. Um, she clicks on the monitor and she sees a screen, but instead of dirt bikes, now it's like every writer that she's ever read the work of being there, overwhelming her. And um, the last two sentences, you know, we got the scenes at, it was her turn. Suddenly, fear climbed her throat and left a metallic aftertaste on her tongue. Um, so it's just kind of cool to show you how you can use one completely different experience 
to describe a whole new one and it still works because emotions are emotions are emotions. Anyways, um, I hope you found that valuable and fun. If you missed the writing activity, you can just wait a couple minutes and then this video will be on Facebook um, for you to rewatch beginning to end at your own time. Or you can go to our YouTube channel where this and every Facebook Live video um, either is or will be eventually uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead and post the details for that in the comments. Dun, 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 dun. P.S. That's my copy and paste theme song. Dun, 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 dun. You look in the other YouTube. I've also all of the um, connections to different recovery. I don't know about you, but during this pandemic, I have nothing better to do than work on being the best version of myself, which means recovery support. Um, um, and last but not least, you can always reach out for peer services if you need something more. That's what we're here for. But I super appreciate you being here. The last thing I'm going to do is occasionally some people come hang out afterwards and give give me some more specific questions about writing. It's kind of weird to just talk to the screen and hope that you're following along because um, I don't know that my thoughts are always like standardized and make sense when someone else pushes them out. I'm really just like a hangout to talk about writing. So if you're free, you can go to that too. Dun, dun, dun. More of my copy song. Dun, 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 dun. Boom. There it is. So if you want to hear my writing, talk about writing, ask questions about writing, or just see my face, go ahead and log into the Zoom. For that, I'm going to say have a happy Sunday, and I'll be back next Sunday at 2 o'clock. Peace out, my homies.